Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Back to the donor vehicle. I believe I have all parts and everything I need now to get this car on the road. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing up is getting the angle gear in, getting this drivetrain all squared away, including replacing this control arm and stuff. I have this uh, angle gear sleeve that was damaged. Showed you that yesterday. I picked up a new replacement as well from a local parts place. These things are, are very different on the different vehicles so you got to make sure you get the right one now there were all-wheel drive volvos in 97 for 850 cars the 97s and the early 98s have the same gearbox assembly from what i understand and probably the same couplings here then halfway through 98 they changed and went with one that they used through 99 so that one would be the same 2000 would be different 2001 would be different so you got to make sure you get the right one and let me show you the new one compared to the old one these are the teeth and damage to the old one of course the old one had the damage from getting it out of the old gearbox and the inside of it wasn't too bad with the flat teeth markings in there not sure how good you can see it I can't really see it that good on my phone this is the inside of the new one. You notice how the teeth are not pointy, but they're flat. You can see that through the other side. And of course, they're not all butchered up. And the surface is smooth. We'll keep that seal in and stuff like that. So this is the new one that's going on. That's the old one that came out. This did not come out of this vehicle. It came out of the vehicle that I donated to my mom. So, just to make a note of that. I'm going to install the angle gear onto this car. I had uh, removed the one that was on here and installed it on another vehicle. Now I have a replacement angle gear, replacement flange, and a few other things that I'm going to do to put this car back together. Now to install the angle gear, it's just reverse of removal, other than the fact that you need to uh, torque the angle gear on the vehicle now if it was possible to run the car without an angle gear I probably would however the angle gear holds that sleeve in place which holds the transmission seal in properly to prevent transmission leaks and transmission problems some people actually manufacture a plate to hold that uh, sleeve in place so they don't need to reinstall the angle gear. I don't have that ability or want to exert that kind of energy. I got a good used angle gear for about $65 at the salvage yard. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that my axle nut is loose. So let me put a socket on there. Make sure that axle nut's loose. After the axle nut's loose, I'll break the lug nut's loose. Then I'll uh, safely elevate this side of the car. I have the tire off. I have the uh, control arm loose and hanging down back there. I have the CV axle out. There's a link below to the video about removing the control arms and the CV axle. However, the four bolt CV uh, lower control arms are a little different. So let me go over that real quick. A 98 and a half and newer SMV 70s have a four bolt uh, lower control arm configuration. These are a little bit harder to get off because the heads of the bolts are in a very difficult place to access. So, which I found it easier to do is I removed the two rear bolts, they're 17 millimeter. I could take this bolt loose and then I had to take the one behind it loose and I 
went back and forth pulling those bolts loose about three turns a piece so I wouldn't get my uh, tool stuck on there and as I did that I pulled the control arm away from the A-frame so that the heads of the bolts wouldn't drive towards the oil pan. So I kept pulling the heads of the bolt against the A-frame while I loosened them. Another thing that you could do if you wanted to is take the motor mount loose there, the two 14 millimeter bolts, and then jack the engine up a little bit. And if you did that, you could get the 17 millimeter ratchet with the swivel on there to take those bolts loose. So either way that works for you, that's great. When the angle gear is in place, it's a longer reach to get that uh, CV axle out. So you gotta have everything, your suspension out of the way so you can slide that thing out through the angle gear. Now that's the transmission side. You can see the teeth that comes out of the transmission and the seals that's in the transmission and in that shaft. It would do you good to replace those seals uh, while you have the angle gear out. Now, with the angle gear out, I pulled it out earlier, there are five bolts that hold the angle gear against the transmission. One here, two, three, four, and five up top. So if you're pulling the angle gear, make sure you pull those five bolts. They're the five closest to the rear. And if you make a mistake, you'll pull this bolt or the one above it and you won't be able to get the angle gear off. So make sure you pull the right five bolts to get the angle gear off. Once you make sure all five of those bolts are out, you can work the angle gear toward the passenger side and it'll come out and it will come out of the hole that you have here. Now there's a, damp, a damper bushing here or mount or whatever you want to call it, but the angle gear can bump against that. And on the 99 car, I had to remove that in order to get the angle gear out. And I believe it's just held in by one bolt. So it is a 14 millimeter, so you want to take that dampener bushing or uh, bolt and replace it if you're going to be doing this, removing the angle gear on the 99 or newer vehicle. It makes it easier to get it out. One of the main reasons is on the back of the motor, you have the oil cooler. And on the earlier 98s, you don't have the oil cooler on the back. But on the 99 and newer, you have the oil cooler on the back and that's in the way a little bit. Going in with the new angle gear, I'm going to clean all this up and then I'm going to lift the angle gear up and set it in place with the sleeve on it. Now with the 98 car, this one, without the oil cooler back here, I have enough room to put the sleeve on it, then slide the angle gear on it. On the 99 and newer cars, you have to almost have the angle gear in position, then you have to lift the sleeve up and put the sleeve on it, then you plug in the angle gear. You don't have to do that with the 98 cars, but with the 99, you can't put the sleeve on either side until you have it in position. All right, I got that cleaned up as best I can. You don't want to push any dirt down into there because you don't want any dirt damaging the seal or nothing. And uh, here is the transmission drain bolt caked up with mud and dirt. So I'm going to clean that off so I can service the transmission while I got while I'm down here so let me go ahead and clean that bolt off drain the transmission and put this stuff back together first drain on the transmission the fluid looks bad but to be honest with you I've seen worse and there is some build up on the drain plug so I'm gonna wipe that off and put it back in and fill the transmission up after I get all this angle gear stuff together okay here you get a nice clear view of the lower coolant supply line you also get a nice view of the turbo drain line that goes from there with two allen screws in it down to your oil pan as you can see here somebody didn't understand and they sealed 
that tube in the oil pan, which I don't have time to deal with right now, or I would. But I'll tell the next owner that if they want, they can dig that out of there and replace the gasket on the bottom of the turbo, which goes right under that connection, and replace the seal, the little rubber gasket that goes on the bottom of the tube. That kit's about $7. Not sure why somebody did that, but they either didn't understand or they were lazy. Now that I have that cleaned off, I'm going to take the inside of the spline that goes on there, put a little anti-seize on the splines, and then I'm going to slide it in place. I probably don't even need to put anti-seize on these splines because of the... Uh, nature of this thing being on your transmission fluid and possibly splashing in there but i'm gonna do it anyway next i'm going to lubricate this uh ridge here with transmission fluid and slide it on the transmission as i explained before if this was a 99 or newer vehicle i wouldn't put this on until after i had the uh, gearbox in place here's a replacement angle gear that i picked up since it's you know, to my knowledge, never had the fluid replaced. I'm going to replace the fluid, so I'm going to pull the drain plug, tip it over, drain it out. Then I'm going to fill it up with some full synthetic 75W90 from Valvoline. It's best to use the Volvo stuff. I do like Valvoline products, and I like Mobile One products. So, at any rate, it's full synthetic. It's the right weight. may not last for 30 years, but it should last a few. Okay, I'm ready to put this angle gear up and in place. I serviced the fluid, drained it out, put it in. I wiped the threads out. I tilted it uh, to the other side, wiped the threads dry. Then I was able to torque it to 25 foot-pounds. I cleaned the seal area, and I, I brushed off the mating surface and cleaned a little dirt out of the hole that the coupling goes in. Now I'm going to fit the coupling in there, make sure it slides in and comes back out and I do have a little anti-seize compound on it. It does start to slide on there. Seems like it's going to be a tight fit. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off, put a little transmission fluid on it and slide it in the transmission set. Okay, it did slide in the transmission pretty easy and as you can see it's almost seated in there on the uh, clip ring. So when I put the gearbox on there, I'll slide it in, and then when I draw it down with the bolts, it should slide into the clip ring. So clip ring stops it from going one way or the other too far. If you want to knock the dirt off from around here, you can. The only purpose would be to prevent dirt from going inside the uh, transmission or angle gear but it's not really a big deal as long as no dirt transfers in there. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the angle gear in place, start a few bolts and come back to you. Okay, I put the sleeve on the transmission and then I lift the angle gear up, kind of like bench pressing because I'm laying on my back with the car on these uh, jack stands. I wiggled the angle gear until it slid on that sleeve. As you can see, it's pretty tight against the motor, and it did finally drop on the sleeve, so I put the bolts in. I used a 14 millimeter ratchet to snug all five bolts down. Then after all five bolts were snug down, I torqued them down to 50 Newton measures. If you ever don't have a Newton measure torque reading, you can multiply your Newton measures by 75% and you'll get your foot pounds. So the angle gear is now in place. Now I can slide the CV axle into place. If you had a newer vehicle, 99 or newer, you could install that bump stop. Like I said, it's one 14 millimeter bolt on the very bottom there. I am not going to hook a shaft up to this vehicle. It's going to be front wheel drive only. Because this vehicle is pretty much in the south, it's going to be southern cow car. But if you're going to hook up your shaft, you go ahead and put that in place and bolt it in in the front, in the middle, and all the way in the back. I'm going to make sure my shaft that goes into the transmission and through this 
uh, angle gear is clean and I'm gonna put some anises on these splines here. I have the axle slid in place. I have the other end of it lined up in the knuckle bearing and I have the courier bearing bolts torqued down. I torqued them to 15 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to pull that ball joint out of the knuckle and put in the new control arm. When you're going to install these four bolt uh, control arms, you're going to have to remove these two forward bolts on the forward side. And the only way you're going to get those bolts out is to remove the two bolts from the front engine mount and then raise the oil pan or the motor until you can slide those bolts out. So I got a scissors jack and a little brace here to raise this engine enough to get those bolts out. So let me work on that. While you have the car engine supported on this jack to get these front two bolts in, go ahead and install them. It's kind of rough. You got to line up the back of it, put a screwdriver or something through there to hold the back side up. Then you got to get the front lined up and you need to use a crescent wrench to twist the bracket so that the screws can start catching. I put the back one in first and then put the front one in and then torque them down. Now I'm going to get this car off this oil pan. You want to do that as quick as possible. may take you 5-10 minutes. Nonetheless, you don't want the car supported by the oil pan too long. Before you let the support all the way off, go ahead and install those mount bolts and torque those down and then get that support from under the oil pan. Next, you want to get the rear control arm bolts in. In the meantime, you want to be careful for this vacuum line that runs along this subframe here. Somebody evidently pinched this line in two places in those washers in the past. So that's damaging that vacuum line. So don't make that mistake. Get that out of the way and then torque those bolts down and then hook that vacuum line back up. I have the new control arm torqued on. I have the CV axle bolt snug down. I come back up here and I service the transmission with the fresh fluid three and a half quarts if you're using these bottles that I use Walmart special super tech ones and they're kind of a nubby gallon that lower line represents a half a quart so you could pour all of it in there except for that half a quart if you're doing these P80 Volvos personally I still have about 30 minutes so what I'm going to do is try to change that temp sensor real quick. I'm going to drain the radiator fluid into my drain pan. I'm going to remove that thermostat housing, change that temp sensor, put the replacement one in, fill the radiator back up, and then I'm going to let this car off of these jack stands and torque this uh, CV axle bolt down fire this car up and take it to where I'm going to get the new tires. Well, that took me about 15 minutes, so I'm going to put the cap back on. Somewhere along the way, that bracket got removed for this temp sensor, so I zip-tied it to the power steering pump. I replaced the leaking clamp on top of that hose. Now I'm going to go ahead and re-pour my coolant back in the coolant bottle. Have the coolant topped off, everything back together on the motor. I installed one of these breather tubes, has, have the car on the ground, got the CV torqued down. I'm ready to go, so I'm going to start the car, drive it around a little bit, and work on getting the tires tomorrow. That's it for today. Car is running real smooth, the RPM's right on, temp gauge is going up and down, and one thing I did notice, I heard the fan kicked on. I ran back in here and checked it, and it kicked on at 216 went right down and kicked back off at 206 so it did have a bad temp sensor the replacement temp sensor seems to be working great 
right now it should be kicking on here in a second it's climbing up to 215 should hit 216 hopefully in a second here there it is I heard it kick on I want to check the voltage see if it kicks back off at 206 going down going down going down last time it was going up to 235 but I think it was just a bad sensor giving that reading 207 fan just kicked off you see the volt go up a little bit and it's at 206 all right that's right if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website and if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them again thank you very much for watching